Hello and welcome to the next patch along video. In this video, I wanted to explore various techniques and how to be able to get A and B parts, particularly in the base module. Oftentimes I find that I, I kind of get this pattern going and then it just goes and goes and goes, or I switch it up using the 217 or 63 shifter on the Sheos module. But I'm never able to return anything, and it's not really anything I can turn into a song structure like an A and a B part, or maybe even a C part. And after watching the latest video by SR Wilson, link above, SR came up with a really interesting way of using the attenuator with the bass module and the data pin to get evolving patterns. I highly recommend that linked video. I mean, all of um, SR Wilson's videos are just pure gold. You can learn so much. Um, and so this is a variation on that linked video that has allowed me to get uh, A, B, and C parts. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and set up the patch and then I'll explain what's going on. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to clock the Sheos module. Clock the Sheos module. We're going to clock it with a 16 and we're going to go out from the 16 to the clock. Next, we're going to take the three bit attenuator from the Sheos and we're going to go into an attenuator in. We'll take the attenuator out to the uh, base modules CV in. Make sure, of course, you have the switch to CV. Next, we're going to go and we're going to connect the 10 volt pin to the base trig. And that's going to get something going for us, which I'm going to actually turn that down for right now. The next thing we're going to want to do in this patch is we're going to hook up the 10 volt CV pin to an additional attenuator. And this attenuator out is going to come over here to a, a voltage controlled switch, and we're going to connect it to the CV of the switch. Now the switch out is going to go over to the data pin on the Sheos. And the input is going to go to ground. So the last part of this uh, patch is we're going to take the CV pads, pin out, and we're going to go up to the diode and we're going to go to the anode, which is the left side. And then the cathode, the right side, is going to go out to the sample and hold pin. Now, if I've done this right, um, what is going on is we're going to use the this first attenuator, which is going to the CV in and has the three bit uh, going into it. This is going to be able to control the range of our base. So let's get that going. All right. So as we turn this up, so we turn up the attenuator, we are getting a higher and higher range of pitches. And as we go lower, we're squashing the range of that control voltage going out until we go down to just a single note. And that note we can tune here. And so what you need to do is find a pleasing relationship between just listen to it, trust your ear. And let's go ahead and put a bass, uh, a kick behind that. So I'm sequencing um, the other modules from the Octatrack, and I did that to keep the panel and the kind of the video clear of extra um, wires connecting the trigs to the clock. We have a little pattern going on. And of course, you can always change it up. 
the regular way by going to 217 or 63 and then go back. So that's very cool. But what we have going on over here with this switch that's controlled by the uh, CV is this switch is going to ground the data pin whenever we take this uh, attenuator to the maximum. So anything in here, it's just going to do this pattern again and again and again. But we'll be able to get a B section that repeats if we go to 100%. So let's do that. We got our A section, and we'll go to our B section. So it kind of grabs a phrase and it repeats it, which is pretty groovy. And then if you time it right, you can get back to the A part unchanged. back to our A part. Or, you know, it could be a variant on it, I'm not quite sure. Um, but it's a way to kind of go from section to section to section. And you'll notice that this section is, is longer than the B section. The B section is a shorter kind of grab. So let's go back to the B. So you can use that as like a funky little breakdown. All right, and let's go back to A. That's a variant. I like that. All right, so um, the last part of this patch, uh, and again, this is directly from SR Wilson's video. So, and he does this patch in, in a way that ha kind of like has like an evolving uh, random quality to it. He gets the LFO involved. It's so cool. So go check it out. Uh, he, he uses the noise instead of the 10 volts, gets an interesting result. So it's, I cannot stress watching that video enough. But the last part with the diode involvement allows you to grab a note and hold it. And let me show you that. So as long as you have this held down, it holds. And you can just get that note ringing out and be rhythmic. your B section. So that's kind of the three different parts you can do. You're in your B section, your A section, and then you can kind of get a C section, <laughs> C section, by uh, holding notes. So I really like that patch, but one thing that always kind of bothered me is that when I'm holding those notes, you have this um, this cycle, do 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 do, and then you hold this thing, you're just like. So I wanted to find a way to make that more rhythmic, and I realized I could get the LFO involved. So let's set up the patch. So we're gonna sync the LFO with the clock divider four pin. We are going to take the LFO out to one of our attenuators in. And we're going to go attenuator out to our low pass filter in. And what that is going to allow us to do is when we grab one of these notes, you're going to be able to, if you have the filter closed a bit, you're going to be able to introduce the LFO that is clocked, creating these 16th uh, note rhythms um, that is controlled over here 
by this attenuator. This attenuator is affecting how open or closed uh, the, the um, low pass filter is, but it also is controlling how much of the LFO's rhythm is being introduced to the note. And I think that just sounds so cool. section again. Uh, the very last thing that I'm going to do is I just kind of want to do an outro jam. Uh, so I want to uh, create one of my favorite patches, which is kind of a top drone using the um, FX module. Um, you can link above uh, to uh, see a greater explanation of this patch, but right now I'm just going to create it. All right, and now we have it set up where on this CV pad, I'm going to have my drone, my cello sound, and on this CV pad, I am going to be able to freeze it. So let's, uh, let's get a little groove going.
right. I uh, hope you all got something out of that. Please check out SR Wilson's great video that completely inspired this patch. Really, this patch is a ripoff. And check out all the other great links in the description of this video for other creators doing um, fun things with the Pulsar. Uh, consider making a video yourself and sharing it. Uh, and if you like this video, please subscribe, like, do all the things. And uh, let me know what you're curious about about this video. Is there anything I could explain more clearly or uh, any other questions that I might be able to jump into? All right, we'll see y'all on the next one.